our live coverage from NAL TV International Studios. We are here with you since 10 a.m. Cairo local time since this tragedy took place. And to whom it may concern and for those who uh, just joined us, what happened today in the morning? As I said, exactly at 10 a.m. Cairo local time, many worshippers were there in, uh, in St. Peter's Church, which, which is adjacent to uh, the main cathedral, the Coptic Cathedral in La Basseya. Of course, worshippers were there to uh, pray and for their midday uh, mass, and it happened. 12 kilograms of TNT. The bomb exploded, killing 23 people. As the death toll was revised by the Ministry of Health, it was said 25, but there are 23. 23 killed, most of them, most of them women and children, and uh, dozens others were wounded. And of course, the wounded, their cases were from medium to severe um, uh, injuries. All of them are now hospitalized, receiving a treatment in many of the uh, hospitals of, uh, of, of Egypt, including, of course, the police and armed forces hospitals. As uh, right after the attack, Minister of the Interior, General Magdi Abdel Ghaffar, and Minister of Defense, General Sidqi Subhi, both uh, give their, their uh, directives to open the, uh, uh, all the gates of all the uh, hospitals affiliated to the uh, police authority or to the uh, Ministry of Defense Authority to receive the wounded and of them to and of course to give them the utmost care. The tragedy uh, uh, which took place um, uh, today in the morning, um, a terrorist mean coward attack which uh, uh, aimed at Egyptians in general. Here we are not speaking about Muslims or Christians, we are speaking about Egyptians. Because if we are going to study what happened just in the past 48 hours, what happened on uh, Friday, it was just beside a mosque, a checkpoint, a police checkpoint, two police checkpoints to be accurate, beside a mosque in Al Haram district of El Giza governorate, just before the midday prayers of uh, Friday for Muslims. And today it was in the midday prayers for Christians in one of the most beloved churches all over Egypt. Then it's, uh, it's not at all a religious issue. Those perpetrators, those criminals have nothing to do neither with Islam nor with Christianity nor with any uh, uh, spiritual even uh, or heavenly coming from God. God ordered uh, the, uh, the people to live in peace, in harmony, to live uh, without uh, just giving, um, uh, just resorting to violence or uh, to try to solve problems or even crises with violence. Violence is not at all a way to, uh, to solve a problem or to express an opinion or a point of view. Um, of course, many world leaders from all over the world uh, expressed their condolences, whether to President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi or to Pope Tawadros II, the head of our Coptic Church. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi himself was keen to give a phone call to Pope Tawadros II to express condolences and to assure him that it's not going to go like that. The attackers are going to be caught and those be behind this criminal attack are not going to be left like that. No, we are, uh, we are living in a state of law and law is prevailing and whenever it comes a terrorist attack like that, it's not going to go, or the blood is not going to go in vain. Blood of Egyptians in general. Right after the short break, I'm going to be back, so stay tuned.
حمل الأحزان لجل الإسلام يعيش ويوصل القرآن طيب عشان كتير وتحمل الأحزان لجل الإسلام يعيش ويوصل القرآن صحابة حبيبنا يا رسول الله يا شفعنا يوم حساب الله يا حبيبنا يا رسول الله يا شفعنا يوم حساب الله يا خاتم الأنبياء من بعد موسى وعيسى وعشنا طول عمرنا الجا مع جنب الكنيسة يا خاتم يهن في رسول الله صحابة Welcome back to continue with live coverage and uh, uh, analyzing the incident which took place today in the morning which killed 23 people in the St. Petersburg Peace, uh, a church affiliated or adjacent to the main uh, cathedral of Al Abbasiya. We are very much delighted to have with us via phone our political analyst, Engineer Hassan Shaban. Engineer, Engineer Shaban, hello. Uh, good evening. How are you this evening? Uh, sir, uh, today, uh, of course, it's a tragedy, and we cannot say it's less than a tragedy. We lost 23 Egyptians, most of them women and children. They were they. Uh, did nothing except going to one uh, of the churches to pray and here I'm not going to say that this is something which is not common all over the world all over the world we can find such bomb attacks explosive laden devices booby trapped cars but 12 kilograms of TNT how do you how do you see this and should I blame the security uh, forces uh, should I blame those inside the uh, the church itself, because also media reports said that only uh, uh, just uh, only out of the cathedral or of the uh, the church uh, is the responsibility of the uh, minister of the interior. But inside uh, there is a private sector security company responsible for that. Who to blame first for the 12 kilograms which entered the whole of the St. Peter's Church? Uh, well, as long as we're talking about security, definitely there is a, some leakage and there is a gap in the security. Uh, there is no doubt about it. To smuggle 12 kilograms of TNT into the cathedral, uh, this is something major. And there is definitely uh, some deficiency in the procedures. Mm -hmm. uh, I think... Uh, the regular type of security is no longer um, acceptable because mm -hmm. we, uh, we were exposed for a very long time. We've been through this for the last five years. Uh, uh, 
you know, fighting against terrorism. <laughs> and I think we should have developed uh, new techniques and procedures to control such activities. Uh, I think there is definitely uh, some weakness in the security. Uh, I, 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 you cannot blame anybody but security for uh, uh, getting uh, this into the cathedral, actually. Uh, I, sir, I cannot really uh, point sir, my finger. Uh, and Jewish Shaban, if you, if you hear me, um, police were investigating claims by witnesses that the bomb was concealed in a handbag of a woman who had placed it on the floor of the church and left. If something like that happened in a street, in a metro station, in any crowded place, this cannot be caught on, on the spot. I mean, should we have more security, tightened security procedures on the gates of any place where crowds uh, may occur, or, um, or uh, these days in specific, we should take into consideration that many incidents took place to trigger uh, more, uh, more um, terrorist attacks like that, topping the list. For example, the arrest of the son of the deposed president and the final verdict against Habara. He is going to be executed as, uh, near, uh, as, uh, as soon as possible after the, uh, the court verdict, the final court verdict that he was indicted with the killing of more than 20 of our soldiers. These incidents which are taking place are just a retaliation or an answer to, uh, to these uh, judiciary or security procedures, or what? Well, let me put it this way. Definitely, what you've said is very true. Uh, it's definitely connected to all of that. But, but again, to get 12 kilos, this is a big volume and a big weight through uh, security lines into the cathedral. Uh, this is a big question mark. Mm -hmm. there, is, there is some weakness, definitely, in the procedures. Um, I think the, uh, the, the activity or what the incident that took place today is definitely connected with Habara execution and the other six members of his organization. Yes, yes. definitely, it is connected. Uh, it is also connected to the Friday attack on the uh, on the ambush in front of the uh, mosque in, in uh, the Pyramids area. Yes. And I was actually terrified today when I saw this big crowd in front of the cathedral investigating uh, the, the, this crime because I felt that we are facing a very well-organized uh, uh, organization and I was afraid that there might be another bomb implanted in the area just waiting for the right time to uh, 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 just use a device from a distance or a phone, a cell phone, to explode another bomb and make more casualties in, in the air. So actually, we need to, to stop thinking in the traditional way. Mm -hmm. We need to have expertise in people. Uh, we need, uh, actually, we, uh, we have a very dirty war going on. And we need uh, new techniques and new procedures and experts. I do not doubt that we have experts, but we definitely need a, a better but when, standard of expertise. When, sir, when the experts are dealing with gangs, for example, it's different than dealing with the very with very well trained uh, gunmen or very well trained terrorists. Because uh, President Abdel Fattah Sisi was very clear in his latest speech and this was in the uh, monthly dialogue uh, with the youth uh, which took place only uh, a day earlier um, when he said that there are external powers there are foreign entities and it's not uh, that difficult to uh, take from uh, his, his, his words that uh, the conspiracy is that big and we are speaking about intelligence agencies from many countries and uh, here I'm not speaking about a country in specific or a one country, but we are speaking about many countries joined together in this conspiracy against Egypt. So how do you see our way to deal with the story? I mean, should we deal it on the intelligence agencies level, security level, experts, as you've said, how to deal with that? 
Well, actually, all, all of what you said will form the, the, our defense, actually. Intelligence, security, Ministry of Interior, uh, 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 the different uh, uh, agents uh, will have to provide us from the street. Definitely. Where is these people hiding? We have to have uh, very strict measures uh, in uh, uh, investigation. Actually, when you get 12 kilograms of TNT into a building, if you have a trained dog, the trained dog will be able to detect the TNT and will start barking. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, uh, there is something wrong. I, I, you know, but, but again, what happened today is not that sophisticated. Mm -hmm. What happened today is negligence. Mm -hmm. Let me put this, I have to call things the right names. What happened today is negligence, and I think the security in this particular area, though it's been there for some time, but they did not experience any pressures, and they were at ease. Yeah. And today is a, is, a, is a holiday, and, you know, the strike came in a very uh, a strange time. Everybody's taking it easy, and uh, uh, even our uh, brothers, the uh, cops, the Christians, actually were going to, to for a prayer because you know this is the beginning of uh, of a of a fast of fasting for them. So actually, somebody uh, uh, planned it well, and uh, he used the circumstances uh, very well to his advantage. But again. This, uh, uh, you know, we know uh, we cannot really ignore the negligence and the uh, primitive ways of detecting uh, explosives and things like this. Uh, actually, even on on the incidents that took place last Friday, I have always uh, asked <laughs> myself: It's very primitive the way we have we have ambushes on the highways because you need to protect. The, the, the officers and the soldiers in these uh, ambushes. Sir, if you they, permit they me, the, uh, all right. over the world there are uh, movable checkpoints and, uh, and checkpoints located in certain places because the people should know or the people should feel secure that there is a security checkpoint in this place or the other because if, the, if anything happened, they would go to a certain place and this certain place is going to serve them. But to move these checkpoints from a place to another according to special tactics or strategy, this is another story. But let me take you to another point, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we are moving forward to the 25th of January and in yeah. many of the media outlets of the terrorist brotherhood organization, uh, mm -hmm. and, and those members of, of this terrorist organization, whether inside or outside Egypt, they said it bluntly in their media outlets that they are going to continue with these attacks uh, till uh, the 25th of January, uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, when, the anniversary of the revolution of 2011. Yeah. Uh, this is the story repeated for, uh, for five years now. Do you think mm -hmm. that this year is going to be different? I mean, should we expect such attacks to continue the same way because uh, they are desperate because uh, they have not achieved any gains in the last five years or uh, this, these, this streak or the series of attacks uh, are going to end here? No, I don't think that the attacks will end here, unfortunately. And it will be very unwise to assume that we will not have more attacks in the future because I think the attacks have moved to the cities. From now on, we, we are witnessing a new tactic. And I think uh, 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 whether it is the 25th of January or not, but I think there is a new era in terrorism have started in Egypt, which is town, uh, town attacks. So, uh, out of I what, think, sir? Out of being desperate, as I said, because they have not achieved any gains, or, uh, uh, or this is their last resort. I mean, from time to time, they should do anything to say that we are still here and we are still powerful to reach places, whether downtown, whether in a cathedral, whether in, in, a, in, a, in a mosque, like what, ha uh, in, like what happened. I mean, it's not only what's going on or the war in Sinai. We can move forward 
to uh, Delta govern rates like what happened in Kafr Sheikh International Road, for example. I mean, why now? Actually, the war between terrorism and, and Egypt was limited to Sinai. And the people in the mainland, the motherland, <laughs> did not really feel uh, the aggression. Mm. So I think uh, all of these terrorist groups are getting instructions from the outside Egypt. Sure. And I think the instructions have changed that they should make the people on the mainland feel the heat of the, their action. Yes. Uh, I think this is the beginning of a series, a series of uh, uh, attacks, and we should be very careful because it will actually start. Uh, yes. And I think from, from now till the 25th of January, we will see more than one, one instance. And mm. it, it, it's a war. We will actually lose some casualties. Uh, uh, but we need to inflict casualties in, uh, on the enemy lines, actually. Yeah. So we need better uh, 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 secret intelligence. Mm -hmm. we, we need uh, sources, uh, sources of information. We need better uh, 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 armament for this type of aggression. We need very sophisticated technology to uh, break through their communication lines because they are very well trained to use new technology. Mm -hmm. uh, we, you're not dealing with every, uh, every day's uh, gangsters. No, no. You are dealing with sophisticated gangsters our terrorists who are very knowledgeable and they know how to use the technology and they are well, well, very well trained. And behind them is very rich countries, unlimited That's resources. That's it, sir. That's it, sir. So it's not, uh, it's not um, uh, a gang uh, or it's not mercenaries only. They are very well trained terrorists behind them, whole countries, whole uh, agencies, uh, secret intelligence agencies, so it's not anymore something which should be taken lightly or to think that those behind these attacks are not very, very well trained and as you've kindly mentioned, very much acquainted with the most modern technologies. Uh, Engineer Hassan Shaban, our political analyst, thank you very much for your input, sir. Thank you, Nirmi. Returning back to uh, uh, what happened today and to summary actions, uh, President Abdel Fattah, Abdel Fattah Sisi condemned what he described as the abhorrent terrorist attack, saying in a statement, Egypt will only emerge stronger and more unified from these events. Also, Prime Minister Engineer Sharif Ismail uh, said in many statements as he was there already, he arrived, I think, just one hour after the uh, bombing take place in the scene of uh, the bombing, the nation's Muslim and Christian citizens stand together against this black terrorism. Also, Sheikh Ahmed Al Tayyib, the Grand Imam of Al Azhar, Al Imam Al Akbar, said the vile terrorist uh, explosion was a great crime against all Egyptians. Here, there, there is no room to differentiate between Muslims and Christians. Uh, from the uh, Arab world, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Yemen, uh, Kuwait, of course, they all condemned the terrorist attack at weather by uh, sending uh, cables to uh, the, uh, the head of our Coptic church, Pope Tawad II, or to, pre to President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. Uh, and um, also from the whole world, EU Foreign Affairs Chief Federica Mogherini offers her condolences and solidarity with Egypt in its efforts to defeat terrorism. Also, uh, our top diplomat, Sameh Shukri, received a phone call from his American counterpart, John Kerry, in which Kerry expressed the full solidarity of Washington to Cairo in its war against terrorism. All the embassies here in Egypt offered condolences to Egypt and express their solidarity uh, with Egypt in, in this war. They also offered condolences to the families of the martyrs and wished all the uh, injured a speedy recovery. Um, 
Uh, of course, uh, Pope uh, Tuador II was in an official visit to Greece where he was warmly received by many of the religious cadres and leaders there, but he cut short his visit to return back to Egypt as soon as he learned about the attack and from the airport exactly to the cathedral to be there and to know what's going on and to follow up the procedures taken to give the utmost care to the families of the martyrs and also to the, uh, the victims, those injured. Also, Hani Bakhoum, the undersecretary of the Coptic Catholic Patriarch, told the Egyptian state television, we will not allow the terrorists to threaten our national unity with Muslims. Um, Egyptians in general were celebrating today the birth date of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And if you are going to go downtown and you find the uh, deserts uh, wither in, in, in many of, uh, in, I mean in downtown or all over Egypt, you would find people uh, buying uh, those deserts to celebrate together, whether Muslims or Christians, we have nothing to do with that. And to add to this, the uh, injured, uh, as I said, they are, they are now uh, hospitalized in all the hospitals around the cathedral, whether defense uh, ministry hospitals, or, uh, hospitals related or affiliated to the army or to the police or in Demirdash or in Dar al-Shifa. And when it was said that uh, in Demirdash in specific, they need blood donations, Egyptians, Egyptians in general flooded to El Demirdash to donate blood for the sake of the uh, injured. We wish all of them a speedy recovery. Uh, regarding um, the uh, the investigations, of course, the general uh, attorney or the general prosecutor, Councillor Nabil Saad, ordered uh, a special uh, team to be formed immediately from the prosecutors to go on the spot to start immediately the investigations and to know all about all the circumstances, the surroundings, and to listen to the, uh, uh, the uh, eyewitnesses uh, witnesses who were there and to also continue with, uh, with the uh, investigations to reach those criminals behind the uh, coward attack. Also, the Pope uh, of Vatican uh, sent uh, a message to uh, our ambassador in Vatican, Ambassador Hatim Saif nasr where he expressed condolences to Egypt and he said that he is praying for the Egyptians to live in peace. Uh, Vladimir Putin, uh, the Russian president, also extended his condolences to uh, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. Uh, a lot of uh, people from inside the country, um, uh, here uh, uh, Minister of Endowment, uh, 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 the Mufti uh, of, uh, of the Republic, of course, uh, Sheikh Ahmed al tayyib Grand Imam of Al-Azhar, uh, the uh, higher councillor for tourism, the cabinet, all uh, the high ranking officials were keen to contact Pope Tawadros II to uh, uh, offer uh, their condolences to, uh, to them. In addition to uh, the UN, uh, the, uh, the Arab League uh, Secretary General Ahmed Abul Ghait, uh, the uh, Arab Parliament and in specific the first Vice President of the Arab Parliament, Ahmed Raslan, the uh, uh, member of our Parliament. He also was keen to introduce uh, or to offer his condolences. Uh, above all, Egypt um, announced three, day, uh, three days of mourning uh, to, for the sake of those who were killed, for the martyrs who fell today in the uh, uh, terrorist attack, with, attack which uh, uh, took place in uh, uh, St. Peter's uh, uh, Church uh, adjacent to the Al Abbasiya Cathedral. Uh, a lot, a lot. Um, the uh, harsh words said by all cadres or all high-ranking officials or world leaders, uh, they all condemned the attack and said that this kind of terrorism can never prevail. Egyptians will never let those terrorists do whatever they like or to um, incite sectarian strife among Egyptians. We are not going to feel uh, that worried or that 
afraid to go to pray. We will pray. And there is many hashtags uh, and, and many uh, posts on Facebook or on Twitter. Uh, most uh, the, uh, the, uh, the one which got a lot of shares is لتكن مشيئتك or let your will do uh, part of the prayers of Christians. لتكن مشيئتك. We all say, inshallah, or uh, um, uh, let your will God do. Oh Lord, we are all praying for the sake of the injured. We are all pr praying for the sake of the families of the victims who lost their beloved today. Um, a lot. Um, in, in fact, uh, um, a lot of phone calls to, uh, to Pope Tawadros II, a lot of cables to him and to President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. Um, I, I don't want to uh, forget anyone, but uh, part of the phone calls which reached uh, Pope Tawadros today, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, Engineer Sharif Ismail, our Prime Minister, uh, Minister of Defense and the General Commander of the Armed Forces, uh, General Sidqi Subhi, uh, Engineer Ibrahim Mahla, former uh, Prime Minister, uh, Grand Imam of Al-Azhar, Al-Imam Al-Akbar, Sheikh Ahmed Al-Tayyib, uh, the former Mufti of Egypt, uh, Dr. Ali Gum'a. All of, of those uh, high-ranking officials were keen to, uh, to uh, phone uh, Pope Tawadros the uh, second to, uh, to express their condolences and to express support to him and to all people who were, uh, who were um, victims of this attack, whether for Fern Martyr or who are uh, already now hospitalized. We, all, we wish all of them a speedy recovery. Uh, returning back to uh, the, uh, the, uh, the incident which took place today and its surroundings. As I was discussing the issue with engineer Shaban, many of the Egyptians, I mean here, uh, we should not be political analysts to know that these incidents may be a retaliation of the arrest which took place just a couple of days ago to the son of the deposed president. Uh, according to law, of course, he was convicted of many charges and he is going to be put on court. Uh, on court, he is going to face these charges. And with the final verdict to execute Adel Habara, Adel Habara, uh, for those who do not know, is a terrorist who admitted himself that he was behind the execution and the killing of more than 20 of our soldiers in Sinai, uh, a case which was dubbed in the media as uh, the second massacre of Rafah. About 23 of our soldiers were killed because of this Habara, and he admitted that. And this incident took place in August 2013, meaning that the legal procedures took more than three years to reach this final uh, verdict to uh, execute Habara. For the terrorist brotherhood organization, this is not the case. So, in retaliation to those two uh, incidents in specific, many uh, uh, would say that uh, it's normal or we should have been expecting that these attacks should, uh, will take place. Also, um, uh, others would have uh, a connection between what happened today or what happened on Friday and the opening of the Rafah crossing. Security procedures are very tight. Uh, we are not speaking about weapons, about explosive devices, but how can we know about the people? I, I may be with IDs, with the, with the, with the legal papers, uh, saying that I'm a student, for example, or uh, I'm, I'm someone who was stranded in this side and want to go to the other side as I was receiving treatment, something like that. And deep inside, I'm a mercenary who is paid to kill or brainwashed to think that whenever I'm going to, uh, to uh, be a suicide bomber, I'm going to reach heaven, I'm going to be a martyr. How to differentiate between those who are really in need of humanitarian aid and those who are really stranded on any of the uh, Rafah crossing uh, gates and those criminals, those terrorists, those who have nothing to do neither with Islam nor with Christianity nor with the patriotism or sense of belonging. I don't know if I'm going to kill people who are worshippers, whether inside the church or inside the mosque. How the hell I can consider myself doing something right? But as I said, there are two cases here, brainwashed people and mercenaries, terrorists, those who are being just paid to kill. Um,
to continue with this, um, uh, security procedures are taking place. Police cordoned the site uh, uh, on the spot. Uh, investigations are taking place as we speak right now. Right now, uh, the um, general attorney or the general prosecutor, Councillor Nabil Sadiq, said that he is going to follow a minute by minute the situation there with the team, specially formed to investigate the the issue. Um, um, the, uh, the incident was on top of the headlines or the top stories of many, if not all, the media outlets, whether inside or outside Egypt. But unfortunately, and also I don't know if uh, this is a coincidence or something wrong happened, there were media reports saying that many of the media figures, of the Egyptian media figures who were there to cover the situation in the uh, St. Peter's uh, Church, they were beaten and they were kicked off. Um, I'm not sure uh, about uh, the, uh, the exact circumstances, but um, as you all know, our dear viewers, that the, um, the uh, Facebook or Twitter, the media outlets, the social media networks are giving a minute by minute what's going on in addition to what is aired on all, as I said, the screens, whether of our state television channels or by the uh, uh, private channels or even worldwide on in many uh, of the uh, media outlets all over the world. Egypt is not going to bow. Egypt, the Egyptians are not going to worry. Uh, the Egyptians, as you, as you see uh, in, in the screen, you would find so many people gathered around the place where the bomb exploded. People, whether Egyptians or whether Christians or Muslims, they are going to, uh, to church and to mosques to pray. You are going to find the masses uh, filled with people from all over Egypt, whether in St. Peter's, uh, inshallah, when it is renovated, or in the cathedral, or in all churches all over Egypt. Also, you are going to find people going to pray in Friday prayers, next Friday, inshallah, and all over the week. So, Egyptians learned the lesson. And... Maybe what's going on is out of being desperate because those for 80 years are just un uh, playing underground and when they found themselves in power and when this power was, um, of course, they misused this power and when the Egyptians did not accept that and they took them from power, they felt crazy and they will do whatever it takes to say that we are here, we are still powerful and we can reach these places. We are not going to be afraid. We are not going to feel uh, uh, just uh, 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 that we are all sad. Sad and sorrow is very much legal. But we are not going to be afraid anymore. We are not going to be afraid to go here and there. You will find it's 11, it's exactly, it's about 11 p.m. Cairo and downtown Cairo is filled with people, whether Egyptians or non-Egyptians. So we are going to continue this way. The lesson, this lesson, I don't know why the terrorists are, are never be able or will never be able to learn. Egyptians are not afraid anymore and they will not be afraid anymore. Whether you are going to use bombs, explosive devices, um, suicide bombers, we are not going to go back. And in each time President Abdel Fattah Sisi is giving a speech, he is saying so. Uh, first, he, he, he thanked the Egyptians for their endurance. For, uh, for knowing well that there are a lot of challenges facing the region and facing Egypt. And to unite together is the only way to get rid of terrorism. I'm going to end this coverage with, once again, the hashtag which is really prevailing. Let your will, Lord, do and go. Well, uh, by this we come to the end of uh, this uh, coverage. Uh, stay tuned on Nile TV International always for more updates. For more details, please log on to www.nileinternational.net. Many thanks for watching. This was Nirmina Abdurrahman.